Welcome all to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and friends. It's seen on the internet 24 hours. To view our program it's on the internet, simply go type in, in capital letters R B R I M O, and then go to videos. We also are seen on Flint, Michigan Comcast Cable Channel 17 every Saturday at 6 and every Wednesday at 8.30. We're also viewed on Detroit, Michigan Comcast Cable Channel 68 seven days a week. Consult your community calendar. I want to welcome our uh, panel. We First we have Mr. Henry Hatter. Welcome. Hi Ron and I want to say hi to the rest of your guests who have graduates uh, from the colleges and universities around the country. That means that you have a great panel here. Well thank you Mr. Hatter. And next we have Mr. Uh, Jackie Williams. Welcome. Hi Ron. Hi everybody. And Ms. <laughs> Denise Smith Allen. Hello, Ron, and hello, distinguished panel. And welcome to our millions of viewers worldwide. We're going to talk about a lot of things. But on this particular show, we're going to talk about the war on poverty. The war on poverty has not been, ach has not been achieved. Why? More people than ever are homeless and hungry in Genesee County, the state, and the nation. Uh, President Lyndon Johnson um, was the architect of the War on Poverty, and uh, we have not came close to achieving uh, his, his vision. And for the life of me, I don't understand why not. Us being the, 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 the most powerful and richest country in the world, but yet, all of us have seen, uh, you know, people with these placards, you know, homeless, hungry, uh, or um, veteran, um, homeless, hungry, even families. I've seen families. The other day, it was uh, a lady with four children, okay, uh, at, at a stop sign. And it just, you know, it just, it just pains uh, uh, me, and I'm sure I share that, that sentiment with millions of, uh, of our viewers. Uh, <clears throat> what is your thoughts, uh, 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 Jackie? Um, yeah, that is a great concern of mine. Um, and one of the things that I find is that um, a lot of people lack the information of the resources that are available. And um, I think that Obama um, administration is working diligently on helping people keep homes as well as if you don't have a home um, providing resources. Um, in Flint alone, there is a program called My Brother's Keepers. That is a program for homeless veterans. And they now have a um, voucher program, which um, our apartment complex is taken now. So they are um, providing vouchers, and what they do is they have a house, and they cook for them, and then they um, teach them how to get skills, and they help them get their car notes caught up. So there is programs for them, and then they also connect them to the other programs for the veterans. And then for the homeless, um, they are doing um, One Stop is a major um, place here in Flint, and they are really stepping out. Uh, One Stop will provide for you deposit information, and they also will give you, um, they would take you and let you know where the places are available, what do you need to do to prepare yourself to get a house. But one of the things that I find is that a lot of times when we were growing up, a lot of our families stayed together until our kids were ready to leave. Mm -hmm. That is not the situation right now. Our families are letting our kids move out. 15, 16, 17, and they're not ready. And what they're doing is, um, as me and Denise had a conversation earlier, they're becoming couch buddies at everybody's house. And they no longer have addresses. And this is how they become homeless, is because they leave home because they don't want to follow rules. Or they decide to leave too early, they're not ready, they're not educated, they don't have any job skills, they don't have any income. And they're doing this, so sometimes it's kind of like self-destructive. You know, they're doing things that are hurting themselves. But there is programs to help them to get them off the street. Um, but there is another negative to that. You can't get housing assistance if you don't have an address. You have to have an address. So you have to, one of the good things, you have to go and sign up with one of the shelters. 
in Flint. If you sign up with one of the shelters, they'll help you get housing within 30 days or they'll help you connect to somewhere else. So, yeah, it is a big problem, but there are people that's working on the solution. But you have to get into the resources to know what they're doing to help you help yourself but you also have to help yourself that's a big thing you can't sit at home and sleep until four o'clock and then get up and then just go out and think that everything is available after hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. very true very true um yes to um, kind of uh, continue on with uh, the discussion that jackie has and the other uh side of this this thing about poverty um you have um an issue with people who don't necessarily have the wherewithal to um, go through the process of uh, dealing with the system. And some of that has to do with maybe some um, mental uh, disability that hasn't been addressed. And so you, and then there's also the drug uh, component. So there are some issues in which um, people have kind of either put themselves in a situation or are in a situation because they have not. Uh, been diagnosed properly or received adequate care for um, mental disability. So with that, um, the, the whole issue of um, not having benefits available or given to them, it's, it's, um, it's unfortunate. And then you also have to look at the reality too that um, there are programs that are not in place like they should be. Now here in Genesee County, for example, uh, for many years, we had community mental health that was available. Well, now um, <clears throat> there's been a convergence of systems that are kind of working, uh, I guess, uh, in lockstep now. And so people may look for community mental health, but that's no longer community mental health. It's community health services. So even by just changing the name slightly, it kind of maybe throws people off in terms of what's, is that available to me? Is that a resource that I can go to? And so, um, you know, when you look across the whole uh, United States, um, there are people who are suffering because of the, the dynamics in terms of employment, um, industries that have left and have decimated communities. And now some of them are rebounding, but they're rebounding rather slowly. So uh, if a person only has perhaps... Um, a high school education or less than and has no uh, skill sets, then they too are at, at a disadvantage of, you know, um, staying in a, cer a certain cycle. So what we have to do is a better job of, again, of having resources available and, and, and helping people to be able to broker the system, to work within the system, and to let them know what things are out there. And if they're not out there, then we have to do a better job of encouraging our legislators and people who are empowered to uh, develop those resources to help us get those things out to the people who are in need. Mr. Hatter, what is your thoughts? Well, I'll just continue with what Jackie and uh, Denise has uh, begun here, and, and that is why people become homeless and why they become in such disarray. And I think they both mentioned, there was one that mentioned uh, mental health, uh, lacking, and there's a lack of uh, programs uh, for those folks. And then Jackie mentioned that uh, some kids leave home early, okay. and they leave home by choice. There's nothing that parents can do, government can do. They have these rights under the Constitution. They can choose whatever they want to do it, and I defend their rights to do it. And uh, and then there's, uh, uh, I think self-help. Uh, they need to do more self-help. I think you mentioned that, Jack. Uh, and I, I think, uh, <clears throat> so some of the solutions are within the home and the parents and, and the community structure and not in the hands of government. Now, for every argument that you make that there's a problem with uh, um, uh, poverty in the United States, I can make a counter-argument that things are getting better. Now, for example, <clears throat> consider childhood poverty and, and nutrition. Title I of the United States Code and of the um, agriculture provides free and reduced lunches for kids throughout the country, the world, throughout our country. And 
for proof of that, all you need to do is walk into the classroom in the morning into the cafeteria or at noon and see the millions of dollars of food that kids throw away during the day. Any given day in the United States. Millions. Monies that could be used for other things to improve the quality of life for people. But we, we allow this to happen because we're pressured by, by political reasons, by people who don't know what's going on. Then you consider a childhood health care. You have my child. You have uh, uh, the um, uh, American uh, insurance program called Medicaid. Every child gets that. Things are, are better. And there are other types of programs. There's AFDC, whatever they call it now, and other enabling legislation that's made the war in poverty much better. But we have to do a better job of utilizing them and, uh, and, 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 and perfecting their distribution and uh, their usage. Because while the rest of we live pretty good in this country while the rest of the world sits in darkness and in poverty and hunger. Uh, and we say, oh, that's okay, as long as we ain't doing it. But there, we have to, in order to preserve the country for the future, we have to do a better job. Well, statistics point out that uh, 45 million people in the United States go hungry. Every day. Uh, you don't want to believe everything okay. that you read. All right. This has been this has been this has been statistically proven. No, it has. Right. Not. Yes, it has. Yes, no, it, it has. Doesn't. I would suggest that you do a little more research, Mr. Miller. No, no, that. All right. Um, uh, uh, and that's that's ridiculous. There are people all that right? milk the system all the time. And right? you know, we're talking about milking the system, as you just said. We're talking about. Um, uh, kids leaving home early, but what about the millions and millions of jobs that are no longer available here in the United States, okay? What about all of those people? You know, they need to eat, they need, they need, they need a roof over their head, okay, but they're not getting it, okay? Millions, millions of, 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 of folk, they've lost their homes, they've lost their jobs, all right? It's not because of anything that they've done, okay? You could you could you could you could uh, uh, attribute it to corporate greed, okay? Uh, 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 downsizing. I mean, there's a number of things that one could, you know. We can't look at this shit, you know what I mean, with our eyes closed. Ron, it's people. You lose your temper, it's I people. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> these, these are these are these are facts. These are facts. Uh, these are proven. These are proven facts. But Ron, all right. Can I just say that because sure. it was my turn. Now, for every person who says that he's been victimized by corporate greed, economic uh, displacement in this country. There are seven people in the world that want to take that person's place. We're talking about the United States. I, I, I mean, from about the rest of the world. Rest. I mean, they I want care, to come but to the United States and take that person's place. That doesn't seven. help anything. <laughs> no, but look at how this. are they going to take? How are they going to take their place if the job no longer exists? Look, and what I'm saying, Ron, is that people would rather be here than there. Okay. Now, the, we're not as bad as as you think we are. But what we have to do is to go through and solve the problem. And we have to collectively solve that problem. One person by himself, or one institution by himself, or uh, cannot solve the problem. But it takes a mindset of people who want to solve the problem to solve the problem. And then people, all people won't become rich. But listen, let me show you how you live. come up with the 45 million. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have that, an uh, address, if you don't have an address, you cannot get any type of help that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So if you add up all the people on the highway, that as soon as you get off, they'll work for food. Or the people that you see walking throughout the neighborhoods. If you see all of them, they get to have one meal at um, the soup kitchen in Flint. If you're in Flint, you go to the soup kitchen at noon. They have one meal a day there. And then uh, if you are at... Um, I can't think of the net carriage town. You have to be gone by 7 in the morning. You have to wander the city of Flint with your stuff 
until they're ready for you for that evening. Right, 7 p.m. They don't give you anything. They don't give you a snack to go. You have to find food. We should open up our homes and we let should. people in. That's a good, that's a good Why word. Why do we do should, that? Should, that means we're not. So my point is who are feeding those people in between, they're not being fed. And so the people that are laying on the couches that we mentioned that left their parents, if their parents have open cases, they can't get help because they're underage. They can't get help. This is where your 45 million people are coming from. Mm -hmm. Are you sure that it wasn't um, <clears throat> the presidential candidate? This is Yours? Yes. Yours? Yes. Mine, no. Romney's number. Romney's number? Yeah. Or a Republican number, I'm not sure. Republican I don't keep up with those was, numbers. Yeah. But it wasn't a Democrat but, number. Okay. But anyway. But, but anyway, anyway my, my, no. point, my, my point is, here in the United States, we have the greatest education system in the world. We said that the people on, are hungry. Hang on, hang on. Well, hang on. And every child gets a chance to have a free public education. Everybody. We used to have community education here. And nobody would take advantage of it. We used to have hire 67,000 people for General Motors here, and everybody could have a job, okay? And there should be residual wealth left around here in Flint, among African Americans as well as institutions and whites and so on and so forth. Where is it? Empty parking lots, that's where it's at. Well, the thing is, Flint. we had chances and, to and invest. And that's indicative of, of, of many other places around going. the country. And a okay. lot of them took the money and moved out, you know, near your area. Like he did, right? He's been out there for years. He's been out there for years. I welcome these people. But they didn't move out of my area. They bought new Cadillacs and stuff like that and boats and stuff like that. But they didn't invest in land like I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank and uh, there should be residual money. We look always at the negative things and not at some of the positive things that can build us. Like, for example, we have enough institutions here, General Motors left enough money here, and collectively among us, and I'm sure that all of you have residual monies, uh, pooled uh, with a plan, you could, you could uh, attract new businesses to the area. Yeah. Like, like uh, Palestinians do in Detroit. In other places, there are a lot of things that we can do, but we got to get away from slavery. Oh, okay. So this sounds like a continuation of the <laughs> of the discussion we had earlier. Okay. So again, I say to you, a person has to understand their history so they don't repeat that history. And without understanding your history, it's it's a, a proven fact. You will repeat it. You will repeat it. So we need to help our folks. I know what and you're need, saying. And we, need to, saying. and we need to help ourselves I was only well. kidding to some degree. Yeah, to some degree. I get yeah. you. Okay. But I'm serious. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with um, the idea of responsibility. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with it at all. But I think we have a responsibility to help under, help folks understand. But knowing that there is going to always be a percentage, percentage who is not going to do it. They're just not. Okay, so I think the word said that we're going to always have uh, poor. Yeah. We're going to have poor a poor us. Always. Okay, it's going to be there. Okay, but then there is an element of folk who say, I don't want to be in this condition, <clears throat> and I want to know how to get out of it. So I need somebody to help me figure this out. And so Those are the ones we should that's on. who you focus on. Yeah. Okay, but then there's another piece that we didn't <clears throat> discuss, and I'll mention this real quickly, is that you have an element of folk who made some mistakes in their lives. They had some problems. They got a history now. They got caught up in the system. So now they decided, I want to do better. I want to take care of myself. I want to take care of my family. But yet when they go in to put out an application and they check off that box that says, have you been convicted? They're excluded. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here we have a whole set of folk out here who are dealing with that issue to the point whereas they may not qualify for uh, federal grants or loans for school, or they may not qualify for housing. They may not qualify this, that, and the other, and the next thing you know, either they're going to recidivate, meaning they're going to do something else so they can eat, or they're going to wander the streets. You understand? So we have to help those folk. Mm -hmm. We've got to do that. Right. You know, so, you know, that's a whole nother discussion, Henry. Oh, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. But and also, to add to that, there's over a hundred, over, over hundred million 
uh, men, women, and young adults that have uh, that have felony convictions here in the United States. That's right. As we sit here at this table That's right now, right. there's over three th three million, all right, men, women, and young adults, okay, under some kind of either in prison, jail, or, un or under some kind of uh, supervision. Uh, supervision. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I mean, I just want to add this: is that this war on poverty. We here at on the In My Opinion show, we're trying to do our our, our share. All right, um, we support uh, here in Flint, Michigan. You know, uh, uh, Catholic Charities uh, on Stewart Street, and uh, if you would, and 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 and, and, and <clears throat> that number there is eight one zero two three two nine nine five zero. They're always in in the need of clothing, food. Uh, personal hygiene items, soaps, etc., etc., etc. They feed twice. You know, they you know they 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 help feed families twice a day. They had to uh, uh, put on a you know put on this uh, the second uh, 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 feeding period because of the abundance and the magnitude of people here in uh, Genesee County that uh you know that you know that are hungry sometimes uh you know the uh, uh and i and i've and i've uh, volunteered down there uh, a few times okay and the director is john manns and uh they need all the help that they possibly can get down there all right uh we here again here on the in my opinion show uh, uh, uh we've stepped up and we supply uh, for thanksgiving we supply all of their turkeys and right. we've done this for seven or eight years and also too uh uh we have a program that's called feed a family program which launched in uh february of, of 2011 and thus far uh we're trying to do what we can but we you know we've provided um uh food baskets for over 200 200 uh, uh individuals and families so uh anybody out there listening you could do this yourself help somebody that you know that that, that you that needs help Okay. Well, I'm glad you made that appeal. That are hungry, all right? Um, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the Feed a Family program needs all the, all the assistance and help that they can get, okay? Uh, because um, it's just, it's, it's heart-wrenching, you know, to, to see somebody hungry, okay? I know what hunger feels like because I was one of those persons that didn't have to leave home, okay? But I thought I knew every doggone thing mm -hmm. and didn't. Mm -hmm. All right, and there was a bunch of days and nights that I went hungry. You know them romaine noodles as they call them, and mm -hmm. how many grits? <laughs> that shit got old real quick. Sure okay. Right. And, and, and just sure. Uh, I want to thank you and the and my opinion staff and panel for allowing this discussion to occur because this need to be we need to have this mm -hmm. discussion. We need to find out where our waste is. We need to find out where uh, the best opportunities are to to uh, deal with the those who are yet uh, left behind in poverty. Okay. We know that there are people left behind in poverty, but we, and we need to narrow it down to so it's a manageable problem, not just a problem thrown out that the people throw up their hands and say, "Alas, there's nothing you can do with it." Mm -hmm. And that seemed to be the sentiment as we. Uh, as we discuss it today, we have to be, be believable, exactly. substantive, and relevant. All of our, uh, and there's got to be studies that prove that there is truly a problem out there. Well, there is a there is a there there is a, a, a problem, a major problem. Okay, any time, as I mentioned before, you see a, a lady with her children, you know, at, you know, at, at, at the stop sign, you know, uh, wanting assistance, you know, to feed her family, and so, and et cetera, et cetera. All right, uh, uh, that there is a problem. Okay, and uh, again, uh, for those that help somebody, mm -hmm. if it's just one person. Right. Help, but do something, okay, um, uh, other than yourself, because I think you'd be would be rewarded. <laughs> Again, that number for those that are interested: Catholic Charities of Shiawassee in Genesee County. The director's name is uh, John Manns. Uh, that phone number is um, it's eight, it's, it's uh, 901 uh, Chippewa Street here in Flint, Michigan, and phone number is eight one zero two three two nine nine five zero. 
And I think what Henry said is, is, is well stated, and I think uh, that we as a local body need to look at the fact that there are churches and other groups that are doing uh, some good work in this community. Um, they're opening up um, and having uh, clothing uh, giveaways and food giveaways and things of that nature uh, on a regular basis. And it's about helping people understand where those resources are so that they can go about, you know, getting their needs met. Absolutely. And so uh, that's, that's going to be ongoing, and I just believe that centrally, you know, when they look at Catholic charities, there may be some who may say, well, you know, Catholic, is that, you know, are we doing supporting a religious organization? Not necessarily so. They have the title, but they have a lot of various services under that umbrella, so they need to be uh, aware of that. Yes, let me like, clarify that, too. Uh -huh. It may be mm -hmm. uh, Catholic charities, but... Mm -hmm. Everybody is welcome. It doesn't matter exactly. what de what denomination uh, exactly. uh, that you uh, 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 that you follow. Mm -hmm. It's for everybody. Right. Everybody is welcome. Everybody mm -hmm. is treated equal down there. Okay, right. they have a number of programs. All right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a number of programs. Call down there, you know, and and see 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 what see what uh, what's available and what fits your needs. Again, that number is. 810-232-9950. This has been a wonderful conversation, but doggone it, it gets, you know, we don't seem to have enough time to really get into the meats of, of, of some of our subjects sometimes, because we only have a, a half hour program. But, un, but until next time, this is Ronald Barry Robinson and friends saying, stay focused.